Hey everyone, Sam here, and today we're going to be building one of Twitter's drop down menus using headless UI and framer motion. Uh, it was my first time using headless UI, and I was really impressed with just how fast I got this menu built, so I wanted to make sure and show you how to do it. So let's get right into it. So here's what we're going to be building today. Uh, if you click on the share button on a tweet or even these three dots right here, you'll see this little drop down menu has a little bit of animation. Uh, you can navigate it using the arrow keys. Uh, you can dismiss it with the escape key. So this is exactly what we're going to be building. And over here, I have just a little Twitter clone that we'll be able to use to build this thing. So uh, we can see right here, we just have these buttons wired up right now, but they're not actually doing anything. And we can see the share icon right here. So let's go ahead and wire up this with a drop down menu. Now I've already added headless UI React to this project. So we can just get started and wrap this button in a menu component. And we'll see menu is not defined, so we can go ahead and auto import it from headless UI React. And if we come up here, we should see it right there. So that's the first step in getting our menu working. The next is to turn our button into a menu.button. So this is how these components from headless UI are exposed. And then next, is to render a menu.items component. And we can put anything in here we want, hello from the menu. And now over in our UI, if we click this button, we see hello from the menu. Now it's kind of moving these buttons over because it's taking up space in the DOM. But if we come back, we can style this uh, menu items component just using class name, so we can make it absolutely positioned. And now if we try the menu again, we'll see the menu shows up and it doesn't rearrange everything. So let's go ahead and wrap this menu in a div with class name relative, make this right zero. And now our menu should be positioned a little bit better. So we can come over and keep adding some classes to make this look more like a menu. Let's give it a background of white and a border and maybe a shadow for now. And let's also give it a Z index so it shows up on top of the other UI. All right, now let's start rendering some items. So the way we do this is using the menu.item component, and we'll just steal the labels from the Twitter UI. So the first was send via direct message, add tweet to bookmarks, and copy link to tweet. So we're seeing this error that says you should render an element as a child. And that's because these menu.item components are actually renderless. And this is where the name headless comes from in headless UI. Uh, as many of these components as make sense to will actually not render an element, leaving the control up to you. And that gives you a uh, complete flexibility when it comes to how these things look. So uh, right now what we're gonna do is come to all these three items and we'll just go ahead and wrap them in an A tag since these are really links. And now we'll see that error went away. And if I come click on the button, we'll kind of see our links right here. And this is great just cause you know, we know how to style anchor tags. We can just throw a class name on here. Let's get rid of this wrapping. And let's make them block elements as well. We'll give them some padding in the X direction and the Y direction. And let's fix our items here, give it a border of cool gray 200, as well as make it rounded. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Now, the first thing you'll notice here um, is if I click one of these menus, we actually see the focus ring on the menu itself. That's an accessibility feature that comes with the library for free. It's really neat. You don't have to do anything, but it actually helps uh, screen readers focus on the element that was clicked. And then you can see right here, actually when I hit escape or click off the menu, that the last button goes to focus as well. So these are all these little things that come for free with this library. Again, I was really impressed. There's basically no setup, no wiring context providers, anything like that. All this stuff just works. So since we're kind of styling this ourselves, we can go ahead and say focus outline none, but uh, the focus is still maintained there again for screen readers. So that will work just fine. Now, the next thing you'll notice is that uh, my hover state here is not doing anything. And you might think to start coming here and adding hover classes to your anchor tags with Tailwind, but with headless UI, there's a better way. These menu items actually accept a render prop. And that means we can pass in 
a JSX expression here with a function that returns our element. So if we save that, uh, we'll see our menu still shows up, but this exposes some new APIs, one being the active property here. And this is what we can use to actually style our links in the active state. So let's go ahead and make this class name an expression. We'll change these to backticks. And now we can say, if this link is active, let's go ahead and give it a background of cool gray 200. Otherwise, we'll leave it blank. And now if I come over and hover the menu, you'll see that our link has a hover state. So let's go ahead and use this on all three menu items. And now if I come over and try this out, we can see they're all hoverable. But uh, more than that, if we were to open the menu and use our arrow keys, we can see uh, the active state is styled for those as well. So that's really cool. Again, all this stuff just coming for free. And that's why we use the render prop so that the active state can be managed for us by a headless UI. Now I didn't call this out, but you'll notice if I hit escape here, the menu goes away or I click outside to close, the menu goes away. And again, the focus is restored, but uh, you can just see, you know, just how fast and easy this was. It's really, really neat. Now we're almost done actually, uh, you know, for functionality, we can come here and wire up links or on click handlers. But as far as the UI goes, uh, this thing is looking pretty good with the exception of a little bit of animation. So if we come back to Twitter's UI and we try this out, we'll see that there's a little drop down that happens right here. And uh, just a subtle little animation, a little drop down and fade in. So it'd be nice if we could do that uh, on our side as well. So to do that, we're gonna be using Framer Motion, which is an animation library I like using for stuff like this. You know, the box is growing out and Framer Motion does all this cool stuff using flip technique to calculate the final size of the box so that you can just smoothly transition from height zero to auto. So when I see something like that, that's kind of what I think. So I'm gonna bring this in. And uh, also it's gonna show you just how well these libraries compose together. Again, headless UI is really meant to be this low level flexible toolkit, instead of giving you something out of the box that's hard to customize, it, it literally gives it up to you. It gives rendering up to you to decide what you wanna render and even uh, what React elements you wanna render as we're about to see. So I've already installed Framer Motion and uh, the easiest way you, you use it is just with a motion.div. So if I were to go ahead and update this to motion.div, we should get an undefined error here. Go ahead and auto import this from Framer Motion. If I come up here, we'll see that right there. Come back down. And uh, this takes an animate prop, which we can just say something like opacity one, and the initial is opacity zero. And so now if I kind of reload this page, we should see those buttons fade in. And you can also pass in a transition prop with a duration of one second, just so we can really see this. And uh, there you go. Now we don't actually want to uh, transition in the button here, so we'll update this back to just be a div. But what we want to do is transition the menu items uh, when we click on the button. So because we need to animate this, the first step here is to actually kind of take control of rendering and unrendering this items menu ourselves instead of letting headless UI do it. And that way we can apply our framer motion transition to it. So what we're actually gonna do is use the render prop from menu. So menu exposes a render prop as well. And we'll go ahead and wrap all this in just a fragment. And the property here is open. So this tells us whether the menu is open or not. Now the next trick is to use this static prop on our menu.items. So remember we have our menu.items and here we have the three items, but this is the actual like items list. And if we throw a static prop on it and save, we'll actually see that the menu is always showing kind of for every tweet here. So static just means that it's always rendered and it's up to us to control whether or not it's showing. And now we can basically just use this open prop to do that. So we can just drop 
an expression in here and say, if we're open, then go ahead and render this items menu. And so now we're kind of back to exactly where we started, where if we click on the menu, it toggles the open state and that open state now controls rendering for our uh, items list here. So this gives us a little bit more control and lets us interface with libraries like Framer Motion. So right now, this menu.items is just rendering a div with our classes, but we can actually pass in an as prop and pass in any element here. So we could pass in an unordered list or a main component, or we can even pass in an expression and pass in motion.div. So motion.div again is coming from Framer Motion, but here we're just passing it in to our headless UI menu.items component. And uh, right now we're still gonna get this menu showing just like before, but we basically have inherited all of these cool animation properties from this motion component, which means we should be able to do something like animate equals opacity one, initial equals opacity zero. And now if we come over here, look at that. We got our fading menu. It's a little slow. Let's go ahead and say transition equals duration, and we'll just say 0.15 seconds. Feels a little bit better. And now for the cool part, let's say the initial height is zero and the final height is auto. Check that out. Just growing from zero to auto, without us doing anything else. We didn't even have to use any hooks or our own state or anything like that, just a few render props and headless UI working really beautifully here with Framer Motion uh, and us not really having to write a whole lot of code at all. And I think we've ended up with something really close to uh, what we see in the native Twitter UI right here. So just a little bit of fade and that growth and that's exactly what we have. So this is pretty Awesome. And of course, uh, again, we have the accessibility. So if I were to use the tabs, hit enter here, I can switch my focus. Um, I can hit enter on this. It brings up the menu. I can hit escape or select. And now I'm back focused on the right spot. So again, the accessibility features built in here. Not only was it easy, but this is probably the most semantically correct drop down I've ever built in my entire career. And I've been doing this for, you know, seven or eight years. So uh, the fact that it's both easier and more correct, I think is a, a testament to how good this library is. And um, if you've ever had to try to customize a jQuery UI drop down or any, anything else like that, you know how difficult that can be. So I was really stoked with this. I'll be sure to share the code for this project, but hopefully you learned a thing or two and I hope you're excited about these projects like I am. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.